gather round, buckaroos, and I'll tell you a story about a hat and a pair of boots that once stood proud and Texas tall on a concrete range. It was the wild Northwest, after all. It's a story I used to hear around a campfire back in the day. Maybe it was a Starbucks. Anyway, they say cowpokes moseyed in to fill up their wagons. They'd look up and smile. But before long, those giants started to fade, rust, and fail. The old hat and boots had reached the end of the trail. The advertising boy said, Lewis, make it really different. Lewis Naismith, an artist. I sat down at my drawing board and whew, I drew a big giant hat on stilts. Quick on the draw. Immediately, I sketched a lady's boot and a man's boot right next to it. In 1953, he's hired to rustle up a design for a Western-style gas station in Georgetown. And I thought, boy, that's a lot of fun. Part of a fancy new shopping complex called Frontier Village. And there was kind of silence. And I kind of looked at their faces and I said, well, I've gone too far, you know. And then finally, it was a chorus of, wow. That's it, that's it, we'll build it, we'll build it. And by doggies, they do. They wanted to build it exactly like I had drawn it. Up goes the office, a 44 foot wide cowboy hat. Then some restrooms, a pair of 22 foot high boots. And in 1954, the Hat and Boots Premium Tex gas station is kicking up some dust on East Marginal Way. Immediately, people just went berserk. Well, I don't reckon anyone's ever seen anything like this. It was the thing where you'd come around a corner and be like, whoa, look at that. I mean, it's very cool looking. The stampede to the Hat and Boots is on. We put all the young men who were the service attendants in cowboy uniforms. It was designed to get the little kids in the back seat to say, hey, mom, dad, come on, let's go and, you know, let's go in the hat and boots. And for a while, more wagons are pumped full of lead here than at any other station in the state. Legend has it even Elvis Salter's over for a fill-up when he's in town for that big Seattle shindig is 62. They did attract a lot of people off of old Highway 99 before the interstate came in. Interstate 5, a new trail blazing like wildfire through Seattle. And before long, it's siphoning traffic and the life out of the poor old hat and boots. From icon to high sword. In 1988, the hat and boots bites the dust. Well, in the last days of the hat and boots, let's just say it was a total major disappointment to even glance over it by mistake and, and remember how it used to be. For 15 forlorn years, Lewis's pride and joy faces down every punk vandal in town. Low down varmints on skateboards get a rise riding the rim of the hat. And one day, word gets out some sidewinders are fixing to ride the hat and boots right out of town. Maybe even tear them down. Well, the hat and boots have been a part of Georgetown for 50 years. Uh, the hat and boots are as important to Georgetown as the Golden Gate Bridge to San Francisco or, or the Space Needle to uh, Seattle at large. 817. Well. Ain't nobody closer to hat and boots than Alan Phillips. The fact is, he lives and works within spitting range of it at the Carlton Avenue Grocery. It's said to be the oldest operating grocery store in Seattle. But hey, that's another tale. Well, I'd, I'd describe us as being an island community because we're separated geographically from other neighborhoods. It makes us, our nature rather independent. 
Some people say that Georgetown is a little left of center. And while there are some lefty artists here, there are plenty of conservatives too. But the one thing we could all agree on is that after 50 years, we are not gonna give up the hat and boots and we're fighting like hell to save them. Sure as shoot. Plenty have taken a liking to this quirky piece of what's called vernacular or roadside art. But for the folks in Georgetown, it means a heck of a lot more. If the hat and boots were ever to be gone from Georgetown, it would be like losing our soul. That's right. Somehow over the years, this colossal cowboy curiosity has become the soul of a community. Save your hat and boots! A soul that's got to be saved. I just like it. It's quite neat. About a hundred of us met up at Cleveland High School and, uh, and dressed up in our, our Western uh, garb. And we marched down to the site where the hat boots used to be on Marginal Way and, and kind of rallied around them. He wanted to stay in Yeah, Georgetown. he wanted to stay and make things pretty around here. And now, here he is. John, John, John. John Keister is another cowpoke ready to wrangle a rescue. He campaigns to save the hat and boots as host of King TV's comedy show, Almost live. It's important for those things to not be lost. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, like I say, a city loses its soul, it loses its character one building at a time. Today we're announcing that we're going to uh, participate with a group of Georgetown citizens. Uh, these boots the aren't made for walking quite idea. yet. The city of Seattle manages to scare up some matching funds for the beloved, maybe a uh, tad kitschy, Icon. It's not high art, but it was a pretty important symbol for a lot of people. And it's going to cost a lot of money. And a Especially lot of Lewis Naismith. I feel kind of humble that, that so many people are so interested in something that really looks like a derelict. What this derelict needs is a good spit and polish. We had to remove the concrete from them before it fell on somebody's head. Lead-based paint had to be removed. There were some issues with asbestos. Um, Alan Phillips and, the, and his partners saddled up for the restoration. The whole Georgetown community was involved in this project from the beginning, um, from fundraising to actual physical labor on the project. It's been a Georgetown effort all along. And on a rainy December morning, the hat and boots are rounded up. These boots are made for walking. And heard it four blocks down Corson Avenue, south to a brand new corral in Oxbow Park. <laughs> All I can do is babble right now. This is the best, best thing that, uh, it, 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 yeah, this is great. <laughs> Well, after working on the project for over four years, my feelings were, thank God this is happening. You only do about one of these a lifetime. Yeah, and, and until we actually saw them moving up the street, it all just seemed like some idea that might happen someday, and it was taking so long, we were beginning to wonder if that day was ever gonna come. Oh, sweetie, oh. I can't believe it. Now, Lewis Naismith moses in from time to time to ride herd on the makeover. This, and I think this line needs to climb a little more before it comes down. Yeah, that's good. The hat and boots looks to be on the comeback trail. But after this job is done, cash dries up, and work slows to a crawl. As the hat and boots reach trails in. Yeah! And finally, 57 years after Lewis Naismith put pencil to paper to rustle up something. Really different. The dust settles on a good as new hat and boots. Overwhelmed, really, actually overwhelmed. 
They're just as bright and colorful as the first day we walked away from them and said that'll do. Well, this feels very, very nice. Joe Lambeau couldn't miss out on this Fandango. His company built the hat and boots, and this is, this is footage Joe shot himself way back in 1954. You want to do the last bit there? Georgetown there artist touches history with brush. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. And I want to thank all of you who spent the last 10 years putting this together. What a fabulous community effort. Well, I'm happy. I, I'm really happy that it's done. And I just like looking around here and seeing all the people who enjoy being in this park. And that's that's really what it was all about. I didn't really do this for me. I wanted to do this for the neighborhood. And so ends our tale of the old Northwest, our community's diehard devotion to Lewis Naismith's rootin', tootin', roadside attraction has brought the hat and boots from trails in to happy trails. Cowpokes gather round to celebrate a cherished icon of the past. The hat and boots are home at last. <laughs> <laughs>